The Lord be with you. Today our theme is again focused in the letter to the Hebrews, where we're looking at the people of the past and their faithfulness in trusting God. Today our opening hymn is Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng, because it supports this theme that we are together journeying toward the eternal city. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, 
beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I am a sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have never offended and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. I am sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray for your promise mercy, and for the sake of the only innocent that are suffering. Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. For it is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together within God's house. We walked in the throng. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord, wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way, 
and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies, and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites, and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish, with those who were disobedient, because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. 
I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The life of being a Christian is one of remembering, and we do that while we're looking with faith toward the future. We are God's people in the present, and we are living through a history that will be spoken of years beyond. 
It's important to remember who we are, descendants of Adam and Eve. And it's important to remember the people accounted for in Scripture and to learn them by name, people like Abraham and Sarah and their son Isaac. We remember Moses, who led the congregation out of slavery so that God's people could be out of one place of hostility and live in the safety of a new promised land. How'd they get there? They had to follow Moses out of the hostility of Egypt by faith, even while he's leading them to the sea. They're sure they're going to die, either by being plunged into the sea or by the army chasing them, until the Lord makes his presence known and intervenes. To their astonishment, the sea swelled, rose, and separated, and the land became dry until all of the people with their carts and animals, well over two million, could pass safely through the sea on their way to the promised land. Who are they? People like us. People like those sitting around you. People just like your mother and father, your aunts and uncles and your cousins. They were ordinary but they did see beyond today and believed there is reward in an eternal city that we are destined for. The writer of Hebrews is helping us recall their names. Do you remember that event when the Lord called Abraham to offer up his son Isaac as a sin offering? Abraham heard it saw the reality of it and how unthinkable a proposal it was. He knows he would normally give a lamb as a sin offering. Now he's being told by God that he must bind his son to wood and plunge a blade in him. We, living in 2022, need to withhold our judgment of Abraham thinking that he might have been deceived or brainwashed or wasn't listening to the right voice. This is Abraham's story. This is not yours. And so we have to have the credibility that in those days, the Lord found a way to speak reliably to Abraham. And so this man, faced with something that he thought he could not do out of love for his son, chose love for God as the higher priority. So as these two, Abraham and his son Isaac, were walking toward the altar, Isaac, the young teenager, asked the question of the day. Hear it from Genesis 22. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father? And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And they went on together. You can feel it, can't you? How the drama is going to unfold and how Isaac is going to come to realize who the burnt offering is. Notice how Abraham and Sarah had been raising their teenage son to pay attention to God's commands. Isaac knows the drill. His family has made offerings as a pattern and they've showed Isaac how. They took time during their growing up years to teach their children the Word of God, which includes distinctive boundaries of how we live and what faithful practices are while we wait for the Lord. 
So the time has come. Isaac has been bound to the altar. And then as Abraham the father is just about to carry out the sacrifice, the Lord makes his presence known and intervenes. He calls out, Abraham, Abraham, don't lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. Now I know you fear God, seeing you haven't withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. Behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as the burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. This true account of Abraham has been told from the time it occurred to the present day. This is mostly what faith in the Lord and being on pilgrimage is like. It's not just a moral set of principles to be a person of God. It's being God's people and walking the pilgrim way amidst temptations by choice. God's people had learned that sacrifices for sin were necessary in order to receive atonement. They had heard Isaac was the sacrifice, but suddenly God intervened and provided a lamb instead. We look back at that family and we count them as our ancestors and say that they are like us. They've taught us to be faithful and see the long-term goal that God is preparing an eternal city for those who wait for him. And while we wait, we act and believe like children of the Father. Today is 2022, and we're living A.D., Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. So that's a span of 2,022 years. From the time of Christ to the time of Abraham's sacrifice, 2,050 years. This is well over a 2,000 year span in which God's people, by observing the Sabbath and by listening to God's word, lived in the patterns that God gave them, anticipating that there would one day be a Messiah. And there came a time when a man named Jesus walked toward the river, the Jordan River, and John the Baptist laid eyes on this person, Jesus. When he saw Jesus approaching, do you remember the words that he said? Behold, the Lamb of God. And then what does he do? Who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist was not the only one who knew this. The people understood. They knew a lamb given to Abraham was the proper sacrifice for sin. And now they're asking the question, is Jesus the lamb God is providing who will take away the sins of us too? That was at the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry, the time of his baptism in the Jordan River. And in three short years, those same people would see Jesus bound to pieces of wood and a blade plunged into him. Those people of God who had been waiting for an answer they mourned as deeply as a person can mourn 
when everything came to a crashing end at the crucifixion of the one they placed their hope in. But in the days to come, they would remember. They would remember how God provided a lamb to Abraham, and now God has provided a lamb that atones for their sin. They began, even in the earliest days of Christian worship, to remember by singing, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. One of the earliest Christian hymns on record. They understood immediately how to pray to a God who intervenes at the right time, and they believe that by Jesus' death on the cross and by his rising, they have a deliverer even greater than Moses who takes away their guilt and promises life after death. I'm focusing mostly on this one account today from the letter to the Hebrews so that we can see the importance and the parallels with Abraham, Isaac, and Sarah. Remembering Jesus Christ as a Lamb of God from the Father, the only Son, helps us focus on Jesus as the most important and Isaac's sacrifice being a foretaste or a foretelling of what would come. Because it's Jesus Christ who proves to be the cornerstone of the church on which God is building. We have to consider that Jesus was dead and placed in a tomb. After three days he rose and he spoke to the congregation showing them that he was alive. So that brings us to a brand new reality we have to live our present lives in relation to a living Jesus, not a dead man from 2,022 years ago. We make choices. We make decisions knowing that we answer to him. So I ask you the question today, will it be said of you He departed from the ways of the Lord and gave himself over to sinful experiences that he wanted to try. Will it be said of you, she was detached from God's people and no longer wanted to be a part of them? Or might it be said of you, They together set their faith on Christ, walking in his ways, believing he will one day honor his promise of welcoming them to an eternal city. While we are pilgrims waiting for that blissful ending, we are faced with a lot of temptation. And Satan tempts you with what you're tempted by. That makes sense. Satan presents you what you want. A sense of belonging. Perhaps the feeling of independence. Maybe the excitement of a whole bunch of new experiences. And you have the choice whether you want to veer on those side roads. And while you are tempted to invest for a while in those relationships or to consume your time doing things where you don't belong, it's wiser to say in advance, I'm going to do what is right in the eyes of God. If you've made that decision before the temptations come to you, then you can say it to yourself and walk away. I'm going to do what is right in the eyes of God. Holy Spirit, 
help me because I know I need to walk away. In the Old Testament reading today, we heard the Lord say, can a man hide himself in secret places so I can't see him? And then he says, I'm making my presence known and intervening. I have placed men of God who will speak my word faithfully to you. Listen to them. They are giving you the right path that leads to eternal life. God's servants will never be found saying, try it all, there's no consequence. But God's servants will say, stay faithful and walk away from those who are leading you away from God. We are called to live differently in a big world divided into interest groups, advocacy groups, lifestyle groups, political groups. I think the important question is, how will all those people know about the living God unless they see us living by the boundaries and the faithful practices that God gives? So we gather here and we remember the names of the faithful, like Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. And we consider ourselves equals, faithful witnesses in the present day. We gather for worship so that the world learns the vocabulary, that there is a Father, and a Son, and a Holy Spirit. How else can they learn unless they hear it confessed from our lips. We are baptized by Jesus' command and promise, and weekly we come to the supper for forgiveness, and we're still singing that ancient song from the first century, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. The Lord doesn't pick us up and separate us out of the world. The world places us in its midst so that our neighbors can come to faith in Jesus Christ and that as they see us in the pilgrim throng, they might ask, is there a way that perhaps I too can come with you? Perhaps this world doesn't deliver everything it promises, maybe with your help, they will come along and they will see that there is a living Savior, Jesus Christ, who does deliver on every good promise. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which is beyond our understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now stand and sing. Last week, we shared the good news with Gary and Deb Fuchs that there is a new grandchild in their family, uh, William Her or Harrison, 
what is his name? Harrison William Hayde uh, is the son of Ashley and Brett Hayde. So we're rejoicing the, with the Fuchs family. Today, we're also celebrating with the Pignati family at the birth of another grandchild with them. Uh, their son, Donald, and his wife, Laura, uh, gave birth to a little girl, Dakota. So we celebrate with Mike and Sandy as well. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have commanded us to pray that you would send forth laborers into your harvest. Of your infinite mercy, give us true teachers and ministers of your word who truly fulfill your command and preach nothing contrary to your holy word. Grant that we, being warned, instructed, nurtured, comforted, and strengthened by your holy word, may do those things which are well-pleasing to you and profitable for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, most gracious Father, we implore you to turn the hearts of all who have forsaken the faith once delivered to your church, especially those who have wandered from it or are in doubt, through the corruption of your truth. Mercifully, by your Holy Spirit, visit and restore them, that in gladness of heart they may begin to take pleasure in your word again and be made wise for the salvation prepared for them. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, you have created this world and mankind in your image. We give thanks for the birth of every child who is made in your image. We give thanks today, especially with the Fuchs family at the birth of Harrison and the Pignati family at the birth of Dakota. And we pray that by your mercy, you would protect and watch over those children until they can be brought to the waters of holy baptism and receive the promise that Christ gives. Lord, in your mercy, Christ our Lord and Savior, you showed mercy, bringing healing to those who needed physical relief. We also pray for our brothers and sisters in need, especially for Jim, Susie, Frank, Joyce, Dennis and Chris, Mark, Dave, Richard, Carol, Glenn, Lori, Donna, Mark and Deb, Lynette, Ellie, Luz, and Wally. We pray for Janet, Kristen, Michelle, Jackie, Delbert, Lucy, and John. O oh Lord, in your great mercy, help them to be well again and grant them your Holy Spirit that they may sing praises and give thanks to you on the day of their healing. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood, as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us in him who gave his life for us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
we stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace.
Today we have family Sunday school for children and parents. We have high school Bible class in the youth room. And today I get to teach the adult Bible study in the Family Life Center. Pastor Andrews has been doing an excellent job teaching the book of Genesis all through COVID times. He did Matthew and Genesis. So while he's on vacation today, I'm leading Bible study on the theme, Salvation is Found in No One Else Other Than Jesus Christ. Uh, we are gearing up for some new things here in the fall. Uh, our official start to the fall part of Sunday school uh, begins on the 28th. And on the Wednesday before, the 24th, is our official beginning for midweek and confirmation classes. So keep that in mind as you're putting things on your calendar. Uh, are there other announcements that you all have to make? There's some free t-shirts out there. Please take them. And I think it's important to mention what we have just received here in Holy Communion. It really is everything it promises to be. When the body and blood of Christ touches your lips, you really are purified. It is an amazing way of God intervening and saying, your sin is atoned for, and you are my child, forgiven and clean. What a beautiful thing for us to experience together as the congregation, the people of God in this generation. Go in his peace and joy. Amen.